Hi there. The purpose of this video is to demonstrate how to use an interactive mapping tool called FloodView Advanced that is available on the Regional Flood Control District's website. If you go to www.regionalflood.org, you can access the tool on the left-hand side of the screen by clicking on FloodView Advanced. Once you click on that, that takes you to another page where you can launch the tool by clicking on the link on the right-hand side of the screen. This tool can be used to view and query and display geographic data and information that we use here at the district. When you launch the map for the very first time, it might look something like this, where the aerials are displayed in the background and the regional flood control facilities are displayed in red, blue, and green line work. If you change the way the map looks or turn on new layers or zoom into a different area, the tool will save those final display settings and show everything the same way the next time you launch the tool assuming that you did so on the same computer using the same internet browser. Let's go through how to use the toolbar at the top of the map to perform useful tasks. On the left, we have a tool for zooming in and out by pushing on the plus or the minus button. You can also zoom in the map by using the wheel on the mouse to just scroll in or scroll out. Up at the left, we have a tool for panning the map where you can simply click on a map and pan around to different locations. We also have a tool called Identify Features, and this tool lets you click on any feature in the map and then get information about whatever you clicked on. So you'll see here, if we select Facilities, and then we click on a facility that's shown in blue, the map will query the information and then display the results in a window so we can get information about the facilities or any other layer that's here in the map. Next, we have the Measure tool. And this allows you to click on one of these three tools and measure area, distances, or to determine a latitude and longitude location by clicking a point on the map. So if I click on this area tool and I want to measure an area, I can zoom into a certain location and I start measuring by clicking a point and then another point and so forth until I finish and then I double click to end the measurement. You'll see the result is displayed in square feet and you also have the option to change the units to display that in acres or square feet or any other unit of measurement that you're interested in. Next to the measure tool, there's a search tool. And this allows you to search for certain things in the database. So if you're interested in finding a certain facility and you know the ID mile, you can type in the ID mile. And once you have that, if you click on that, there's options where it will display the data or you can click on this Zoom tool and zoom to that facility. Next to the Zoom tool, there's a Highlight tool. If you click on this, you'll notice that the feature you searched for now is highlighted on the map. You can clear that highlight by using this other tool at the top that clears out any of those highlights. There's a Flash tool, which is similar to Highlight, but that will flash on and off, so it's a little easier to see where that is. And we also have a Print tool. If you click on that, that gives you the ability to print the information associated with the feature you're searching for. So it pops up in a PDF window that you're able to print or view and get information that way as well. So the search tool can be used for facilities, but there's also many other layers that are useful, such as cross streets, drainage studies, addresses. So for example, if I want to search for cross street, I could come in here, close the previous search, and I could say search for Warm Springs and maybe Pecos as the other road. If you hit search, it will try to find those cross streets. It looks like it found it. You can hit the zoom tool, and it will take you to that location where those cross streets are located. So that's it for the search tool. Next to the search tool at the top, this is where we have our layers and the ability to view and to turn on and off the layers. As you look at the list of layers, you'll see that there's a lot of information and data available that can be turned on and off. There's also separate checkboxes for the labels, so that allows you to turn a feature on and off, or separately to turn the label on and off, so you can do one or the other. As you scroll down the list, you'll see there's a lot of reference information like streets and topography, parcel data, the different entities and jurisdiction. There's also a lot of hydrologic information like the land use and soils layers, subbasins. And down near the bottom is where we have the information about our regional flood control facilities that are shown on the screen. So let me go back to the top and I'll zoom out a little bit and we can play with some of the different display settings. 
You'll notice that the layers are interactive in the way that when you zoom out to a certain level and you're too far away, then by default the map will turn those layers on and off, and that's indicated by this symbol here. So if you're interested in seeing some of these features or labels that are turned off, all you have to do is zoom into the map until you get to a scale where it makes sense to display them and those labels will be legible and won't clutter up the map. So you really have a lot of control on what to display. So for example, if I'm interested in parcel data, I can turn that layer on and zoom in and you'll see all of the parcel information starts to show up on the screen. We also have land use in the map and those are color coded by the different categories. You can also turn the labels on and off for the land use categories. We have the soil boundaries and labels again for those. If we continue down the list, you'll see lots of other information. Here's the subbasins that are used in the MPU hydrologic analysis. Those also have labels that can be turned on and off. As we continue down, you'll see lots of other information, street labels, FEMA layers, concentration points. These show the flow rates that were determined in the HEC-1 modeling in the MPU. And like I mentioned, at the bottom of the list, this is where we have our facilities. So right now, the MPU facilities are displayed, and we can turn the labels on and off to show the ID miles. Now you'll notice that there are two different facility layers. One that says facilities tenure, and the second one says facilities MPU. Now this is showing the same information in both of these layers, but they're displayed a little bit differently in terms of the color scheme. So if you're interested in understanding the different symbologies, there's another tool up at the top of the toolbar, and this says View Legend. If you click on this over on the right-hand side, you get the ability to see the legend for all of the different layers in the map. So if I turn the legend on, and I scroll down to Facilities, and I click on Facilities MPU, this will give a description and show you what the different colors in the map represent. In this case, blue represents existing facilities, red represents Category A proposed facilities, and the green line work represents Category B proposed facilities. Now we can also view that information using a 10-year symbology. And this symbology is what we use to basically display when these facilities are programmed within our 10-year construction program. So I come back over here, and instead of the MPU symbology, I can click on 10-year. And these colors are used to show the status of the facility, like whether or not it's already completed or under construction, or if it's waiting for funding, or whether it's programmed to be built in the next five years or the following five-year cycle. So now that we've spent some time looking at the legend and the layers and understanding how to turn those off and on, I want to go back over here to the left and you'll see there's this button called WMAP Default. This is a new button that we recently added and the purpose of this button, if I click on it, you'll see that it automatically selects certain layers to display. So as I scroll up, you'll see that the facilities are turned on and flow arrows, subbasins, um, soils, land use, lots of different layers. And the idea behind this is that this is mirroring what was created in the 2018 MPU maps. So we created maps that were called watershed maps or W maps in the MPU. But those were PDF maps that are static and those came on 24 by 36 sheets, so some large scale maps. And so the intent of this program here is that you're able to basically replicate those maps, but you can zoom in, I can pan around to any area that I'm interested in, or zoom out, and then I'm able to have the same display as those PDF maps, and I can print those. And so if I want to go ahead and print a map, what I can do is get the display set to the location where I want it, and then I can come up here to this print icon, and when I click on this, you'll see now instead of just default, there's a second option called Watershed Map. You can select the page size, or you can print to an image, but we'll just select 11 by 17 PDF. It allows you to put a title in, so maybe you're putting this into a report, and you could call it Figure 1 Vicinity Map or something like that. Then you hit Create Map, and what this will do is it will take a second and it will create a PDF, it will add a legend, it will format the map, so in the end you have a nice looking map. So I open that up, and here on the screen you can see that it created a figure, it put the title up at the top, and this display, what is shown on the map, looks exactly like what you would find in the 2018 MPU maps. So this is just a better way to print the map than trying to sometimes use that large PDF map to print smaller areas. You'll see on the right the legend has been added, as well as a scale. And the only thing I'll say about the scale is right now it's showing a nice round scale. If we go back 
and we want to view this map at a different scale, we're able to do that by clicking on the zoom tool, or we could use the mouse to scroll in. And now if I hit create map again, this is going to make another map at a closer scale. And what you'll notice when I open this map is that it's no longer at the same scale of 1 inch equals 2,000 feet. Instead, now it's 1 inch equals 833 feet, and the number is not as clean as like a 2,000 that's something that's easily scalable on a map. But the scale is accurate, it is just a little strange, and that's because we're using layers in this map, like topography and aerials and other data sources that come from outside the district, and so our hands are tied a little bit in terms of what scale we can use. So you're not able to put in an exact scale and get that on your map. So just be aware that you might want to play around with the different zoom levels to go in and out until you get the scale that you'd like or something that will work for your purposes. So that's some new functionality, those W maps, and the ability to print those with a legend and a title. Hopefully that's helpful and a good resource and a way for you to be able to print maps that look exactly like the MPU maps. We've been through most of the tools now. The only other thing we didn't talk about on the far right, there's a help tool. You can click on that and you'll be able to view several videos that talk about how to use the different tools, similar to what we've done in this video. Hopefully now you have a good feel for how to use FloodView Advanced and the different functionality and tools that are available in here. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out to anyone at the district and we'd be happy to help you out. Thanks a lot for watching.